In this review, we're going to be taking a very close look at the Metal Deformation, Devouring the Hard Devil. This is an amazing rendition of the 2007 Megatron, and really puts to sleep any other figure in the competition. I can't wait to get into the details of what makes this figure superior, so by all means, let's get in to the review. What's up Alfonso Nation, Alfonso Peterman here today, welcome one and all to another episode of Teletrend Reviews. Finally, I get to this one, right? <laughs> this is going to be an awesome one. I can already tell. I can already feel it. But before we get into it, I do would like to give a big shout out to Shozy Store for supplying this figure for review. Big shout out to them. Thank you so much, Shozy Store. If you guys don't know what their website is, I've been sponsored by them for a while, so you should. But they are a great website where you can get a bunch of third party transformers. You can get some 3 0 there. Uh, you can get some fourth party. You can get Marvel stuff. It's a really good site. If you guys are interested, I will go ahead and leave a link in the description box below where you can get this figure and more guys this is the devouring the heart devil now <laughs> obviously that's a very menacing and ominous title but this is clearly the 2007 megatron uh from the 2007 film and it is a, a really nice a remake, I would even say, of the MPM Megatron because they do have a lot in common. And even there is the Honey Badger Megatron that this also looks similarly to. But I, I just feel like this one right here is just bigger, it's better, it just has a better display presence, and we're gonna get into that. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the packaging. There you have the beautiful art of Megatron. He's slinging that weapon there, uh, that he definitely used against Sam with Wiki with no problem. And you got Devouring the Heart Devil on the bottom. It is a metal deformation figure. It's a huge box, so I'm stretching really far <laughs> to give you guys a close look. Uh, it's the same thing on both sides, and this is the AI Mech brand. I'm going to move it this way, you flip it this way, it is the LS12, the Volume the Heart Devil, Deformation, they just, they make really good stuff guys, they just, man, they've, they've been blowing me away with a lot of their releases, and then on this side you got LS12, and you guessed it, <laughs> Devouring the Hard Devil. But that's pretty much it for the packaging. It is really nice, actually. That's all for the packaging. It's very simple on both sides, and uh, I love it. But without further ado, let's just get into the main event, which is Megatron himself. And holy <laughs> crap. Holy crap. Holy crap. This is the AI Mech LS12. Megatron. We all know it's Megatron. This thing is just excellent on so many levels. From the size and the scale and how massive he is, to the painting on every intricate detailing on his body, to the accuracy of what his robot and alt mode looks like compared to the original CGI render, and then the overall detailing to ensure that it maintains peak accuracy while also being able to transform. This is a kick butt figure. <laughs> so here we go, we're gonna get some close-ups just to show you guys what I'm talking about when it comes to amazing detailing. You got beautiful etchings and detailings all in the chest mode, all on the shoulder pads, all on the shoulder itself right here beautiful etchings and detailings you can definitely see the attention to detail there and then coming up to the arms the arms has excellent molding and detailing it really just has that alien 07 megatron vibe there it is and you can most certainly see that it's very consistent all around the figure as well you don't have one side of the figure that is not detailed well and then one side that is it is all coming together. I'm also quite impressed to see that this figure had some die casts. I wasn't expecting any die casts from this figure. He does have some pretty nice die cast pieces on him along with that beautifully painted plastic and then this is just this is just amazing. I mean you got the back section you can definitely see that this is a jet of some kind giant wings on the back and the way that that compresses is awesome as well. I mean I think I just think it's just a very beautiful overall design one thing i love and admire 
the most. I would almost go as far as saying the most is this beautiful head sculpt. This excellent head sculpt. That's the best head sculpt I've seen on a Megatron 07 figure. That's Megatron. You can't confuse that with anything else. Nice hieroglyphics on the side of the head here. And you got some on this side as well. And you got some on some other components of the figure as well that I'll show. But I love how there's like little lines that cover over the eyes to really show uh, you know, like it's a transformer eye and it's a very alien looking. I love the jaw, how it comes to a point, very accurate. I love these little pieces that sharpen up under the eye there. That's a very accurate piece. This overall head like build is exactly how he looked in the film. This beautiful top here, excellent. I just, I'm a big fan of the head. I love how his mouth moves. And if you, like if you maneuver it a certain way, you can get the mount open really, really wide, which is also a beautiful bonus. But that head is a beautiful peak. That th That is a peak feature for me. And on the back of his head, if I rotate it all around, there is a button. Let's go. There is. You press the button like that. Hang on. Bingo. Like that. And it unveils the LED. <laughs> Y'all, y'all, everybody knows how much I love LEDs, how much I'm a big fan of it, and when I cover the lighting, you can really see how it looks. You can really see how it shines in the dark, and it even looks great and very visible in the light. And now, turning to the articulation of this figure, it has a really nice range of motion, especially giving all of the abstract sizes and shapes and pieces that stick out of him for the arm the arm does there is a it's like shoulder pad you bring it up and it does come out like this you can probably finesse it but you'll start pulling at it as you can see so you don't want to do that but it does come all the way down and then it does have an arm bend like that arm comes back down now the arm does rotate upwards and it actually can go all around, but you have the back wings that obstruct in robot mode. His head does move all the way around, completely all over. Now, there is some little shoulder pieces you got to move out the way to really uh, accomplish the full range of motion. It does move all the way up like this, and it does come down. So the up and down is not very much, but it does go around. When you do move it up, the chin, the mouth opens super wide the wrist rotates completely around as we've seen and then the fingers they all individually articulate uh the two fingers here they have they are double jointed so they they articulate like this and then like this at the edge of the finger uh this piece here does not articulate at all except for the swivel at the base and the same applies to this one as with this one he does have a waist rotation and it does go all the way around which is a beautiful touch Beautiful waist rotation. We'll come down to the legs. The legs come all the way out and that hip skirt, not really a skirt, but that hip piece there does come out to assist. And then it comes all the way down. Leg rotates around like this. Leg comes all the way up. Beautiful ratchet joint. It comes to a bend. Beautiful ratchet joint. Comes back straight like this. And it does go all the way back like this so very nice ratchet joints on this guy and it really does work out you can get some really awesome rotation also i don't know if i mentioned it but the arm does rotate like this as well and coming down to the feet the feet does have a pivot like this and a slight pivot side to side like this that's actually come out significantly on the side and it does have a tilt on the front and back toe sections and turning now to the accessories let's go i'm excited man he comes with this giant whip like uh weapon which is obviously something he's used in the film several times and i like that he does come with two exactly like the mpm except unlike the mpm this thing is just beautifully painted very sturdy because i did have the mpm uh before i did have that like to put side by side and the one that the mpm comes with is just 
terrible compared to this one. This is the actual piece that pegs into the arm, and then this is the piece that you would peg the hands into to complete the overall weapon. Even this weapon here has some articulation so once you peg it into the arm you can articulate and maneuver the arm to make it look like however you want it to and i think that's a really great touch there you go you got the articulation there and that's how it works on this little screw here and he comes with this excellent blaster this is just a beautiful rendition i love that we actually have a blaster that was actually used in the film very well and this was a very powerful tool of megatron's wrath in the 07 film and this perfectly encapsulates it this is a beautiful sculpt very alien looking you can see the different detailings all in there the etchings the spikes very spiky which is consistent with his actual body design i love that there's still some gold like etchings and paintings here some little like touches of gold which is again consistent with that so it so it blends in perfectly once you remove the hands and you replace it with the blaster you can actually move this over and then you just kind of peg it in like that i wish once you peg it into the arm this protrusion you would find a way to maybe like remove it like maybe you could just pull it right off but you can't do that because when you move it back to the middle section here, you can put both hands on it, and then you can mimic the elongated version of this weapon, which is what he used to literally blast the crap out of Optimus Prime. So this is what it does. You basically take the top off like that, and it begins to expand. And once you move it all the way up, you can pull it all the way like that. And it disc this part here, this connects with this piece, and then once you expand it all the way outwards, you bring it back down. And that is the beautiful, giant cannon, the long version. It literally expands into that giant, super powerful, I'm gonna call it a super cannon, that was powerful enough to blast Optimus off of his feet onto a building and down to the pavement and of course as you expand it out you see more detailing more detailing all the way down to the tip here and you see all the gold all of the gold it all comes together uh even even the hollow points which they didn't really have to paint or they didn't have to pay much attention to but even the points on the inside you look on the inside of this thing you can still see the silver painting. So the entire piece has been painted, even the piece that is not very visible when you display it. So I think this was a beautiful touch. This is the best accessory that it comes with, in my opinion. I just think it really highlights him in a very excellent way. Now to apply both of these accessories, you will need to obviously remove the hands for both of these scenarios. The hands just, you literally just grab them and you just hold the arm you little, give it a twist, comes right off, just like that, and leaves an open peg like that. Uh, if you wanted to use the whip, you just take the whip, like I said, you take this part in the hand, you peg it, give it a good push, until it snaps, it's a little tough. Well, I guess it doesn't snap, so sometimes I believe it snaps, sometimes it doesn't, but this one I guess didn't snap this time. But that looks great, and then you just take this piece here, and you peg it directly into the arm. Now that does give a nice snap. And there you have Megatron with the giant whip. And he looks beautiful with that. That just highlights the classic beauty of Megatron in the 07 film. He just, I mean, it, it's just so nice the way that it looks like it protrudes out of his arm. It's a part of his body design. I love how it's all consistent with the painting and how it just completely blends right into the weapon. Just for giggles, I'll go ahead and do both of them. I will remove it. Once again, you take it and you just kind of push this edge into that and then you peg it into this. And that has a good snap to it. And again, you can articulate this however you like. You can raise this arm. <laughs> I mean, that is just excellent. That's just excellent. It is gorgeous. That is Megatron of the 07 film with his beautiful battle whips. And I'm telling you, if he would have used this enough, he could have put some serious beating on a lot of the Autobots. Just, just start slinging it around like he's a freaking like ninja. Uh, to apply the blaster, you can also, if you wanted to do just one, 
you'll just move it over into 90 degrees and you peg it in just like that give it a nice push and there he has his excellent blaster the handheld blaster it's really really cool it's beautiful i love how it looks overall design it has a really nice touch one thing i will say that i would have much rather they do for this figure is for the gray piece that connects to the actual arm to also be silver to also have that same overall consistency because if you look closely you can definitely see how it's just a gray piece that sticks out and you can see the disconnect you can see this is like the beautiful shiny beautiful shiny then you got that normal plain gray so if this was also painted silver which is something i'm gonna do to customize it myself just to kind of make it look a little better um if it was painted silver it really would look like there is no breakage at all there's it's not an accessory it's part of the arm so uh yeah i would have much rather they do that but it is still nice and it looks great the way you can display it can also hide it as well so it all depends on how you articulate it and lastly we're going to add the other hand to really mimic that amazing scene that really showed off the power of this weapon. So we're actually gonna move it. You can actually rotate it this way and it'll bring this other one out. And then you just kind of finesse the arms together. Uh, I would actually recommend removing it first like this. Then getting the arms in position is the easiest way to accomplish that. You get them all in position kind of like this. And then for the weapon, you would obviously just Man maneuver it like that to where it has like the little cross well not really a cross but like a little v and then you would peg it into each one of the arms just like that and then you have him hand handling it with both arms and that is excellent we'll go ahead and do the articulation of the blaster we'll maneuver it out like that and boo <laughs> yeah let's go this is excellent this is megatron with what i'm gonna call the super cannon where he utilized it against optimus prime in the 2007 film and blasted him all the way like that thing was so powerful it lifted optimus off of his feet and sent him flying into the building that is how much power comes into this giant shock cannon that Megatron wielded in the film. Once again, if I bring it closer, you can see, you know, everything is consistent on this side right here. Everything is consistent, but you can see that gray uh, breakage. You can tell it's an accessory. It would be really awesome if it was the same uh, silver or even a gold, uh, like this, this, t this like soft go that you got on here. If it was there as well, it would really flow even better. So, and one of the final and one of my favorite features of his robot mode is the all spark if you take the chest out uh to make it easier you just take the uh the piece here you just bring the whole section down now if we do that it'll unveil the entire cavity where the all spark is now guys this right here has got to be my favorite touch for his robot mode they did not have to go here but they went here. You got beautiful detailings on the inside of its chest, beautiful detailings, and it's all consistent and very symmetrical. I love, you know, this little like rib section here, but even with the all spark placed, the beautiful cracks on the side, on the edges, it creates this ring of impact that really shows the damage that the all spark did to his spark chamber. And yes, the all spark is removable. That is amazing. And even on the inside here, you got all the cracks in the square formation there. Guys, this all spark is just spectacular. Never seen anything painted quite like it. I am so glad this thing comes with the all spark, the amount of things you can do with display with the different characters that can use them. You can put them in Optimus's hand. It's very, very amazing. I love the overall silver and the detailings in this AllSpark is phenomenal. Very consistent with the real AllSpark. And I am just so 
proud of this figure and I'm amazed at how great it came out on the AOI Mac Megatron. It is something that the MPM Megatron has as well, but the way that it's painted here with the AOI Mac Megatron and the way that everything is detailed and put together, the overall display is just so much better with this one here. Now I'm gonna place it right back into the chamber. It slides in there nice and snug. I just love that. That's just one of my favorite things about the robot mode. We'll bring it up here and this piece actually if you just apply some pressure to the center of the actual piece, it's going to pop out just like that. And this piece is a purely die cast metal piece. Once you remove that, you can enclose the chest again. And there you have the all spark exposed with the cracks and everything blends. Now that everything is together, you can definitely see the amazing blend and the overall detailing that it all brings. And you can also see the impact ring from this exposed uh, cavity here. You can mimic the scene where, you know, Megatron was actually killed, or you can have him laying there with the all spark exposed and he's dead, laying on the ground, which was his final demise in the 2007 film. This here, in my opinion, makes this figure even more worth it. Because even though other figures have this, as I said, the, the, de the detailing and the painting of this one is better, and it's oversized, it's massive, and we're gonna get into how massive it is in the comparison segment. And speaking of the comparisons, let's get into it now. I'm just gonna tell you guys one of my favorite things about this figure, and you're gonna see is how absolutely huge he is. He's a humongous figure, but I love it. He's Megatron. When he shows up, he sets the whole mood, right? He is the main villain. So I want him to be big and menacing, but when it comes to uh, like MPM figures and some other figures, he does not scale. He does not scale with MPM, and you're gonna see what I'm talking about. Just to give you an example of Studio Series, here he is with Studio Series <laughs> Sentinel Prime. That's Studio Series Voyager Class Sentinel Prime. And that's... <laughs> He's like barely at Megatron's knee. That is how huge this guy is. And I'm gonna show you guys what he looks with a leader class figure, which again, he towers over. This is leader class Shockwave. Still no comparison. He is a skyscraper compared to Studio Series figures. And I, I just, it's, <laughs> there you go. Even for MPM figures, as I said, this is MPM Bumblebee. And there he is with MPM Bumblebee. Now that is, that's MPM Hasbro. So that gives you an idea. See, that's like really too small. <laughs> Now, for oversized figures, he will. So, for example, this is the Black Mamba Optimus Prime. But this is the oversized version, and there you go. See, you can see the clear and present improvement with the overall scalability of the two figures. That actually looks a lot better. That actually looks a lot more accurate. You need to basically have oversized figures for it to make any sense <laughs> if you plan to display them all together. But I love how they scale in general sense, and I love him next to Optimus Prime, of course. And just to give you another MPM, this is MPM well, this is really the KO MPM Starscream, but it's the same scale as the original MPM. And as you can see, he's a little too small. I think Starscream is a tad bit taller, a little bigger than that. Of course, Megatron is bigger than him. Unfortunately, you can't really scale him very well with the MPM Jazz. And I don't remember seeing the oversized version of the 07 Jazz, but I believe the silver lining of that, it will be small enough to put into Megatron's hands as as we see Megatron's hands, you know, it doesn't really, it's its not really very uh, stiff and strong, so it doesn't really hold a lot of weight. So the fact that you have a smaller Jazz allows it to be a lot easier for him to actually hold the two halves of Jazz, which we've seen in the 2007 film. So he is able to hold the two pieces of Jazz. You do have to finesse it a certain way. You do have to kind of work it out, but it can work out. And it does look amazing together. And I think that's a really good way to display him, even if the scale is not 100% working out. And here he is in the gigantic 
and glorious jed mode like this thing is awesome i have personally never seen a jet mode for the 2007 transformers megatron this beautiful ever before this nails it i will say from experience when i initially transformed them it was a bit difficult and a lot of the pegs were stiff a lot of the joints were stiff and some of the contortions that were needed to get them into the jet mode did feel like I was kind of breaking the figure or I would have to do something that would require me applying some force and it feels like you're breaking it but it, it you're not you're not breaking it you're transforming it as it should be so just exercise caution because these pieces can break there are very tiny pieces he's very spiky in many different sections so it's easy to break something take your time make sure that when you apply force everything's lined up properly so that you don't apply force the wrong way and then you end up causing some permanent damage to it but for me it actually ended up very well and this is the result this is the beautiful jet mode from the 2007 film we saw him for the first time in the michael bay franchise and he flew out of sector 7 it was just so awesome i'm gonna try to give you guys a closer look and here we go we got the beautiful jet mode this is obviously the head and then there's a piece here that covers over the eyes to kind of you know conceal the face nice spike at the top i love the stem and i love the painting on this overall figure you know it's, it's the same consistency as the robot mode where you have a lot of that gray gradient and you have like the lighter grays in some sections darker gray in other sections you can see on the wings here there we go it's darker on the edges and it's lighter in the center and it fades so exceptionally well but this thing is super heavy uh even in robot mode but jet mode is particularly because i guess everything is just kind of flattened and so it's very very heavy it's a huge wide heavy piece full of beautiful die casts and awesome plastic and everything is painted so well i love all the different painting applications you got some gold there and that gold you know that same painting scheme that we saw in the robot mode really translate over very well to the jet mode i'm gonna move the camera up a little bit to show you guys the underside <laughs> his underside is pretty wild you can see that this is an alien this is an alien like this is not from this planet this is no earth craft that he <laughs> was inspired by this is purely cybertronian and that's what i love the most about this overall design is that it's just pure cybertronian i mean overall the whole thing just really compresses very well and once you understand the transformation like once once you get the concept of where everything goes it's actually easier to transform and once you transform for the first time a lot of the joints become easier to do it for the second time now whether or not you consider that a good thing <laughs> that's your personal preference i don't consider it a good thing uh you know when you transform back and forth multiple times it does loosen up some of the joints and so it's not that mint crisp uh you know tightness that you get in a robot mode but i still had to transform him to give you guys a beautiful in-depth look at the beautiful jet mode and just to give you guys an idea of like how large he is here is studio series shockwave and there's your comparison i mean like the studio series shockwave versus this guy is just a night and day comparison when it comes to the scale like this guy is ginormous but i love his beautiful overall design in his jet mode it is massive well anyways guys hope you enjoyed this review as much as i enjoyed making it once again big thank you to shozy store for supplying this product for review if you guys want to check it out i will leave a link in the description box below i've i've just i've, I've never seen anything like this and uh, this is why i'm a big fan of third party i'm just a big fan of what the other companies are doing outside of the hasbro releases and it really shows off it really shows off in this one here anyways that's all for today's review guys thank you so much for watching and tuning in and i look forward to more i want more of these i want more examples i want some dark of the moon stuff but until then we will talk soon this is your teleturn reviewer and i'll catch you in the next one till all are one